I started uploading consistently not even a year ago and I am making a better living for myself now than I did back then with my full-time job. At the end of the day, it's really about patience, consistency, persistence, and luck. You know what? When I decided to analyze Lana's channel, this is the first video I watched, thinking that maybe she would give me all the answers I was looking for and I wouldn't have to watch the rest of her content to figure out how she blew up. But instead, I found the same generic advice that you'll see all over YouTube. It's all about consistency and persistence. Oh, and by the way, you need to get lucky too. Like, how is that helpful? The good thing about success though is that it always leaves clues and Lana's case is no different. And while I'm sure consistency and luck and obviously great content played a role in the growth of her channel, they're not the reason she grew so quickly. Lana followed a genius strategy that is, at least in part, fairly easy to replicate and in today's video we're going to see exactly what it is and what it did for her. Let's get into it. So when I started looking into Lana's channel, I noticed something quite intriguing and it's that all her videos have been getting lots of views from the very beginning. And this is quite unusual. Like normally the first video of any big YouTuber will have lots of views because people get curious and go back to see how they got started. But in this case, it's not only Lana's first video, it's every single one of them. And if you sort her comments by date under those first few videos, she's got an unusually high number of comments from five years ago when she started her channel. So it's not just people from 2024 going back and watching her old videos. She was already getting a significant amount of views and comments five years ago and you know, that's strange because if you have a YouTube channel, you know how freaking hard it is to get people to engage with your content at the beginning. And interestingly as well, some of those comments from five years ago mention the amount of subscribers that she had at the time. For example, this comment under her first video mentions that she had 600 subs back then. And by the time she posted her second video, she had over 700 and was growing at a rate of 200 subs a day. And let's be honest, that's just crazy growth for a new channel with two videos published five months apart. I mean, it's possible, but you know, it's not easy. So naturally I was intrigued and my first hypothesis, my first thought was what if these aren't actually her first two videos? Like we all know it, it's not uncommon for YouTubers to take down their crappy content from years ago. So it is possible that Lana had been posting for a while before then but her old videos are now unlisted or private. And there was a bit of that for sure because in this comment she mentions that she's got 12 videos on her channel and today this is only her third. So she definitely took some videos down but still something was not quite adding up for me. I felt like I was missing something. So I went through all the comments from five years ago and noticed that something kept coming up. Or shall I say someone? Yep, <laughs> turns out the answer had been staring at me all along. The answer was Jordan Peterson. Lana was a big fan of him, so much so that he's in the thumbnail of her second video and this alone would be enough to get her a few more views than normal because as you probably know, making content about celebrities, famous people or really well-known people in your niche is one of the best ways to get some traction when nobody knows you. But this isn't how most people discovered Lana at the beginning. One of the things that really did it for her is that she used to be a regular in Mr. Peterson's comment section to the extent that she may have even been a bit spammy, judging by these two comments under her first video. But there's something more. It wasn't just random people picking up on Lana's comments all over Jordan Peterson's content. Someone else saw them, someone who already had a platform at the time. And that's how Lana ended up on Mr. Regan's podcast. And I think you had something like 9,000 replies uh, on one of your comments. And I was like, who is this girl? Why? What, is she like a famous YouTuber? What's going on? And I went to your yeah. page and you had like 16 followers. And uh, it was weird. <laughs> Lana didn't have that many subscribers or views when she was interviewed by Mr. Regan, but this podcast drove a lot of people to her channel in the early days. And as we all know, when your content starts getting more attention than normal, then YouTube will think it's good and it will start recommending it to even more people. And it's kind of like a snowball, you know? That's why under her first few videos, you'll see many comments being like, I don't know how I ended up here. <laughs> But we know, and Lana knows, the algorithm was on her side. But Jordan Peterson and Mr. Regan weren't the only ones driving traffic to Lana's channel. There was someone else, a third person. And that someone was Thomas Bragg from Yes Theory. Thomas and Lana used to date, and she was in a few of his videos, which also gave Lana some much needed exposure when she was starting. And that's also how some people found her channel. But of course, this is just one part of the equation. Like, it's all well and good having YouTube and big creators giving you exposure, but if your videos are crap, people won't stay and watch them. So we gotta give credit to Lana for making great content for people to watch and subscribe. And you may be wondering, what's so good or unique about her content? Well, one of the things that I've noticed is that she makes videos about topics that appeal to a really broad and diverse audience. And not only that, many of these topics are also really good at sparking conversation, at, you know, speaking to emotion and generating a lot of engagement. In this video, for example, she talks about her views on hookup culture and look at all the comments. One of the things that us humans love to do is express our opinion. We just love the sound of our own voice.
voice. And Lana knows this, so she wouldn't directly ask people to comment, she would just ask them to share their thoughts both in the video and the comment section. So all of these videos where she's sharing her views and stuff or talking about feelings and experiences that are pretty much universal became great vehicles to grow her channel through all the engagement that they were generating. And then another really good thing that she did to generate engagement and build a community early on was starting a book club. Each month she would interact with her followers in her community tab and let them suggest book titles and pick one to read together. Then after finishing the book she would run a live discussion about it on her channel until one day her channel became too big for these focused discussions and then she started hosting them on her Patreon instead. This is just one of the many ways Lana would interact with her followers but there's more. She was also pretty active in her own comment sections, like she would always ask her viewers a question under her videos and on some special occasions she would also make her followers part of her content, asking them to submit voice notes or video clips that she would then feature in videos like this one. And this is such a clever move because involving your audience in your content makes them feel like there's a little bit of them in your channel and that's a great way to keep people engaged. The other thing that I noticed about Lana is that she's not afraid to be herself on camera. She's very calm and not particularly energetic but she doesn't hide it unlike many other YouTubers who would deliberately try and dial up the intensity. She's also an introvert and will happily admit that she likes to be alone and that she's socially awkward and I'm sure many people can relate to that but many won't be as comfortable as Lana owning it. This was a brave move coming from her but it really paid off because it helped her to build a brand around her personality and it created true fans among her viewers. What I've noticed recently though is that her videos have been getting less and less views particularly since February 2024 and I'm sure Lana has also picked up on this because she's been trying to get feedback and asking her viewers if they're still seeing her content suggested on YouTube. This could simply be part of the natural YouTube cycle that most creators will experience. Sometimes you go months without making a truly great video and your channel slows down or your viewers lose interest for whatever reason. I, for example as a viewer, go through phases with all the creators I follow, like I'll watch someone's videos religiously for six months, I'll be obsessed with their channel for like a few months or a few weeks and then forget about them for a year before I start watching again and you know I like to switch things up like that and this doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing anything wrong it's just that life happens and people's priorities change and I'm sure there's a bit of that in Lana's case or at least that's what some people are saying in the comments of her recent community post but as far as I can see she's also been engaging less and less with her own followers before these two recent posts in her community tab she hadn't posted anything much for a year and she used to be a lot more active on there before and also she doesn't seem to be running the book club anymore and when she did she was a lot more engaged with her community so that could be a factor as well the other potential issue that I see is that she's been doing the exact same thing for five years. If you watch her videos in a random order you wouldn't be able to tell which are recent and which are from let's say 2021 and while consistency in your branding and message is good sometimes you just need to switch things up you know you need to do something different. I don't know like what do you guys think? Do you follow Lana? And if you do are you still watching her videos? Let me know in the comments and if you like this video and want to keep learning from the best check out my other case studies. We've done The Wizard List, KDU, Mangaji and many more and they've all got super interesting stories and growth tactics that you can use to blow up your own channel. Thanks for watching, I'll see you very soon.